Hi, hello English readers and everyone. Welcome to this new live. We're reading today a new chapter of this book, Wuthering Heights. This is the adaptation of the famous English classic of literature, one of the most important uh, books of English literature, re uh, written by uh, Emily Bronte. So uh, we are at chapter 13 today. So I will start, I will do the reading of chapter 13 and then we will have a little break I will stop the live reading and I will be live again at around six o'clock, six-ish, depending on what at what time we finish this live. But that's sort of the time frame. And we will read the final chapter, chapter 14. And we uh, will... Uh, close the reading of this book and um, we will discover how the story ends and yesterday we um, read chapter 12 in which we were saddened to learn that oh there's a little bit of light here yeah um in which we learn, we um, were saddened to hear that, uh, to learn that, um, uh, what's her name again? Kathy, yes, that Kathy was sort of stuck in this house in Wuthering Heights after the death of her. Um, very brief husband, Linton, uh, dies from his um, illness, uh, his, as I, um, as we discussed uh, in our previous lives. Um, Linton is uh, Heathcliff's son, and he is very weak. He has a very um, fragile condition and uh, health condition and um, he uh, did not live long um, so they get married so Heathcliff forces um, Kat um, Kathy to marry him to marry his son so that or um, so that Thrushcross Grant, which is the inheritance from Kathy's dad, Edgar Linton, will um, automatically go back to him because Mr. Linton, so um, Kathy's father, ha um, has died. Um, yeah, he dies in chapter 12. Yeah, so they both, um, Mr. Linton and Linton uh, die, yeah, more or less between uh, chapter 11 and 12. Um, yes, I think in chapter 11, at the end of chapter 11, probably, um, we learn uh, the death of Mr. Linton. So, um Mr. Heathcliff knows that Mr. Linton is gravely, is very um, gravely ill, uh, gravely ill, sorry. And he definitely knows that his son is ill. So if she marries his son, then he will automatically be uh, the new owner of Thrushcross Grange. And though... Uh, and this way, he will be able to um, have a tenant in Thrushcross Ranch and ask, uh, well, sorry, once um, Kathy, Kathy marries her, his son, then he will ask her to move to Wuthering Heights. So this way, he will be able 
um, so once his son dies, then he will be able to rent Thrushcross Grange because nobody will be there. And this is what happens. So his plan work uh, perfectly, like clockwork, as we would say. So um, uh, Kathy doesn't have any other choice than Mary uh, Linton because she's locked at Wuthering Heights and she wants to see her father. She wants to be able to go back to her house and uh, look after her father. But uh, she's not... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit low, I realize. So I need to move up my chair. <laughs> oh, sorry. Here we go. Yeah, that's much better. Um, so he... Um, he forces her to to marry his son because um, otherwise she would not be allowed to uh, go back to see her dad. Um, so she accepts, and she because she deep down she really loves Linton, and um, she wants to kind of bring some joy to him and because Linton in a way wants to marry her as well although he knows that he's very sick um, but he loves her they love each other so in a way it makes sense as well but um, maybe maybe not this way in this manner so she uh, accepts and marries him instantly and um, her father and then she's allowed then to go back to um, Thrushcross Grange and then her she's able to be there for her dad once he um, dies and then she has to move to Wuthering Heights and but without Nelly, uh, with um, uh, Heathcliff doesn't allow Nelly to uh, move back to Wuthering Heights because she used to be the housekeeper there. But um, Heathcliff doesn't want her back, and instead he wants her to stay at Thrushcross Grange and be the housekeeper there because he wants a tenant there. And one day, so um, that's about a year later, there is this new tenant, Mr. Lockwood, who arrives at Thrushcross Ground. And the story is, uh, moves, um, uh, continues back into the present. And um now that Nelly has stopped, has finished her story, so um, we are back in the present time and uh, time of the story. And Mr. After knowing all of this, Mr. Lockwood decides to not stay at Thrushcross Grange, and uh, instead he wants to uh, go back to London. Uh, but he rented the house for a whole year, so you will have to pay. So Heathcliff tells him, well, fine, but you will still have to pay those months that you uh, wanted to rent, that you wanted to rent initially. So Mr. Lockwood accepts and um, he... Uh, Never, nevertheless go back to London but um, it's been but it, uh, Mr Lockwood has started to have feelings for Kathy and secretly he likes her very much and would like to uh, take her with him uh, to London because he sees that this poor girl is so sad and um, 
and then happy in this life, in this stuck life. Um, and she's stuck in this life, sorry. And, uh, but, but he um, knows, well, actually he believes that she's not in love with him or she um, doesn't, doesn't think uh, of him like she, like he does. Um, I don't know, I can't remember. Um, how he says it exactly. Um, mm -mm. how that hand, huh? yeah, it would be so different if Katty and I were friends and I could take her away to London. Um, Yeah, I can't remember. Sorry about <laughs> this blank. Um, I can't remember exactly where I may love her, but why would she love me? Yeah, uh, I can't remember exactly where he says that um, she doesn't love me anyway. So... Yes, I may love her. I may love her. We're not sure exactly if he's in love with her, but he starts having feelings. But why would she love me? And I live in the city and must return there. No, Mrs. Dean, it is not possible. Yeah. So then he leaves. Okay, so let's start the reading of chapter 13 now. Mr. Lockwood returns. 1802. In September of that same year, I was invited to visit to visit a friend in Yorkshire. And on my way to his home, I found myself close to Gimmerton. I sat and suddenly decided that I wanted to go to Thrushcross Grange. I could stay in my own bed instead of a guest house and visit Mr. Heathcliff to discuss the rent money for Thrushcross Grange. When I got to Thrushcross Grange, it was evening. I knocked on the door, but nobody answered. So I rode around the house and found an old woman sitting on the steps. Is Nelly Dean inside? I asked. Nelly? she replied. No, she's at Wuthering Heights. Are you the housekeeper? Um, are you the housekeeper here? Here then, I look after the house," she replied. "Well, I'm the tenant, Mister Lockwood." She stood up quickly. "Mister Lockwood," she cried, "why did you tell us that you were coming? The house isn't ready." I told her that I was only that I want only wanted a clean bed, food. And a good fire. There was no need to clean the house for me. Is everything all right at Wuthering Heights? I asked, following her inside. I think so, she said, putting wood on the fire. I wanted to ask why Nellie had left Thrushcore's Grange, but the housekeeper was too busy getting things ready, so I started walking across the moor towards Wuthering Heights. It was night. But the moon was full and bright. When I got there, the gate was open and the smell of, of autumn flowers came to me from the garden. Hmm, this is different, I thought. The front door was open, too, and I could see and hear the people inside talking. Diff, ik, oat. Said a nice voice, a, a sweet voice. 
This is the third time, you stupid boy. I'm go I'm not going to say it again. Difficult then, said another voice, another deeper voice. And now, and now, kiss me for saying it too well. And now, kiss me for saying it so well. The second voice was that of an handsome young man. He was dressed in nice clothes and sitting at a table with a book in front of him. His face was happy and his eyes kept moving from the page to a small white hand on his shoulder. Kathy stood behind him, her gold hair sometimes meeting his dark hair as she put her head down to read his writing. She was smiling. I suddenly felt angry with myself. Why hadn't I tried harder to make her love me? But it was too late. Hareton read the word again. And suddenly, Kathy gave him five quick kisses. Then they came to the door and began to walk happily together. Uh, then they came to the door and began to walk happily together out on the onto the moor. I did not want them to see me, so I walked around to the outside of the house and found that the kitchen door was also open. Nelly Dean was sitting inside. Why, it's Mr. Lockwood, said Nelly. Why, it's Mr. Lockwood, said Nelly when I entered. Why, why didn't tell us that you were coming? I'm only staying for one night, I replied. I'm leaving tomorrow. So why are you here, Nelly? Tell me, tell me. Zilla left, she replied. Mr. Heathcliff asked me to stay here until you return. Um, Mr. Heathcliff asked me to stay here until you returned from London and needed me at Thrushcross Grange. Uh, until you returned from London and needed me at Thrushcross Grange. Have you come from Gimmerton? Gimmerton? Uh, from Thrushcross Grange, I said, sitting down in a chair opposite her. I wanted to talk to Mr. Heathcliff about the rent while I was there. I was here. Oh, then you must talk to me or Miss Cathy, she said. But she's gone out with Hareton now. Ah, but you haven't heard that Mr. Heathcliff is dead, have you? Whoa, so here you can see the beautiful illustration. You can see Mr. Lockwood here, Kathy, dictating the words and teaching um, how teaching Hareton how to read and um, and write as well. So you can see here that's Hareton, a brand new face, a brand new look uh, of Hareton. So you can see a very peaceful and happy face here on the picture. And look at this. There is a little smile on his face. And look how, look Kathy's face as well. And how peaceful she is in the, in the expression of her face. Um, and kind as well. You can you can sense the 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 calmness and and the kindness as well. Now that Heathcliff is dead, you can see that um, the dark and um, heaviness uh, and heavy life at Wuthering Heights is, is completely uh, vanished. Heathcliff, dead, I said, shocked. How long ago? Three months ago, she replied. Then she told me the end of her story. 
Okay, so back to the narrative, to Nelly's narrative. A fortnight after you left us, Mr. Heathcliff asked me to come back to Wuthering Heights. Of course, I was happy to be back with Miss Cathy again. But when I got there, but when I got here, I was shocked. She had changed so much. Mr. Heathcliff told me that she, he was tired of seeing her and I had to live in it and I had to live in it to live in one of the rooms and kept and keep her with me she was happy about this and I slowly brought her books and other things from Thrush Girls Grange but soon she grew bored and lonely she preferred to go to the kitchen and argue with Joseph than stay in our small room Hareton often went there too and he was always silent and angry. She was rude to him at first and told him he was stupid and lazy. How can you spend a whole evening sleeping in front of the fire, she said. Then she laughed. It's like a dog, isn't it? Nelly? Or, or a horse. He works, eats and sleeps. How boring. Mr. Hatton will ask Mr. Heathcliff to spend to send uh, Mr. Um, sorry, Mr. Hatton will ask Mr. Heathcliff to send you upstairs if you don't stop speaking to him like this. I replied, seeing him seeing Hatton move his hand. I know what Hatton ne never speaks to me. She went on. He thinks that I will laugh at him. He began to teach himself to read once, and because I laughed, he burned his book. That was stupid, wasn't it? Hadn't? She went and she went upstairs in the morning. I knew that she was sorry for teasing him, but she was clever. Af and after that, she started reading out loud. When Hareton was in the kitchen, oh, oh, and after that, she started reading out loud when Hareton was in the kitchen. Then she would put the book down at an interesting part and leave it near him. But he never picked it up. One Monday, Joseph took some cows to Gimmerton. Hareton was in the kitchen and Cathy kept looking at, looking at her cousin but he would not look at her. Finally, she turned and heard her, and I heard her say, Hatton, I would like you to be my cousin now. Please don't be so angry and rough with me. I don't think that you're stupid. I like you. That's very straightforward. Hatton did not answer. You should be friends with your cousin, Hatton, I said. If you were then you would be a much happier man. A friend, he shouted. But she hates me and thinks she is better than me. I don't hate you. You hate me, Cathy cried. I was unhappy before and angry. Please forgive me. What more can I say? She took one of her books and covered it in paper and she wrote. Mr... Hatton Earnshaw, um, and she wrote Mr. Hatton Earnshaw on it. Then she asked me to take it to him. Tell him that if he takes it, tell him that if he takes it, I will teach him to read, she said. I took the book to him and put it gently on his knee. He did not pick it up, but he did not throw it off either. I went back to my work. A little later, I came back into the room and saw their two heads of the book. Their eyes were bright and they were both smiling. That next morning, we had breakfast with Mr. Heathcliff. Cathy was putting small, small flowers in Ayrton's food and he was trying not to laugh. Then he did laugh. Mr. Heathcliff lifted his his head quickly in surprise, but Cathy looked back at him with proud, angry eyes. It's a good thing I can't reach you from 
um, it's a good thing I can't reach you from here, he shouted. Why don't you look back at me with your mother's eyes? Stop it. I thought that I had stopped you from laughing. It was me who laughed, said Herzen quietly. What did you say? shouted Mr. Heathcliff. Herzen looked down and said nothing more, but Heathcliff immediately turned to Cathy. Are you trying to make me hate me? To make him hate me? He cried. Get away, do you hear? Herzen, make her go. He won't, he won't listen to you now, said Cathy, and soon he will hate you as much as I do. You have taken my house and my money. You have taken Herton's house and money too. We are friends now, and I shall tell him all about you. Look at how um, very impertinent she is. Heathcliff immediately reached out and took her hair. You can see an illustration here. Look how aggressive he is. As Hareton moved to stop him, Heathcliff's, Heathcliff's eyes were very angry, and I knew that he was planning to hit her. Then, suddenly, his hand moved to her arm, and he stared hard into her face. You must stop making me angry, or I will murder you one day. He said suddenly, he said, suddenly in a softer voice, Nilly, take her and leave me. All of you, leave me. A little later, he went out and he said that he would not come back until the evening. Right, so the chapter ends like that. So we'll see. We don't really, we don't know yet how Heathcliff died. So there's a little bit of suspense here. Um, but it seems like, um, well, we know from the beginning of uh, chapter 13 that there is a nice happy ending here for Kathy and Hudson. Um And a happiness that could only be fulfilled with the death of, uh, without without the death of Heathcliff or his departure from Wuthering Heights. And she's very, so you can see that um, she's very conscious of the fact that he, he uh, actually took her money and her house. Um, and similarly to Hatton, he is responsible for um, for um, Hatton's um, poor social status. So um, yeah, it's um, that's um, an interesting. Um, take here um, because you can see that um, Kathy is very aware of uh, Heathcliff's manipulative and calculation or um, uh, is she's very aware of the fact that she's been rubbed in a way and Hareton too and that her Hatton's been robbed too. And um, I think that she, um, as soon as she understood that and was in the right frame of mind to stand up to Heathcliff, then she decided to become friends with Hareton and see him as an ally instead of an enemy. And this way, 
if they t if these two were friends then they could go against Heathcliff and make him leave Wuthering Heights or uh, make him um, um, suffer or just stand up against him and um, and stop being um, harassed in a way and violated and, and violated by him and hurt by him because we can see here in this scene that he's about to hit her because she replies back and she doesn't um, let him get away with things and that Heathcliff doesn't like it. So it starts to get really angry, but because she looks so much like her mother, that's why he says, like, stop looking at me with those with those with those eyes, your mother's eyes. Um, so that is the only thing that makes him stop. Um, is the fact that she reminds him of his um, of of her mother and the love of his life, and um, that make him stop. That makes him stop and. And that's why he leaves again. So let's see um, then what happens in chapter 14. So um, we'll, I will go back. I'm, I'm going to come back. Sorry. I'm going to come back in um, maybe um, 15, 20 minutes. And we are going to continue and finish the story and um, but you can already uh guess what's happened maybe uh i very quite uh excited it's gonna be a very short very short chapter so uh i hope you enjoyed these uh, this chapter uh, please leave me a comment once you read with me uh, the chapter um in the under the video and uh i would love to to hear your thoughts on this chapter and now i see you i see you at around in about 15 20 minutes see you later bye bye